Hi, stationary friends. Welcome to Ginger Peachy Pins. Um, today is a different kind of video. I'm not going to try to keep it as short as I can, but I'm going, I want to do a little um, vlog sale. Do you call it a vlog sale if you don't have a vlog channel? I don't know, but a stationary pen and ink sale. Um, I've been needing to clean out some things for a while, so I'm going to get through them pretty quick. Pen cases, uh, inks, pens, and a few other things. So, um, I will ask you to, I will list everything in the description below with the prices, um, because I still need to do a little research on some prices. Um, I'm going to ask for shipping only in the United States, just to keep things simple. Um, flat rate shipping of $5 for as many items as you want. Um, and payment with PayPal, friends and family. Um, I'll ask you to email me. Um, I'll put my email address down in the description. Email me and I will go through them in the order that they are received. So if the first person wants to buy everything, then I'll reply to the second person and say, you know, nothing's available. But in other words, I'll go in order, try to keep things as fair as possible. Um, I don't want to hold anything. So if you say I'm going to get paid next week, I just check back and see if it's still available because this is a lot of stuff and I don't want to get mixed up in it. So um, just keep it simple. If you feel like a price is a really unfair, then feel free to, you know, let me know. I'm going to do my research. I don't want to cheat anybody. Um, if something is, you know, especially valuable because it was limited edition or something, the, the price might reflect that. Um, most everything will be, you know, under retail value for sure. So, but I will ask you to help pay for shipping. I'm not a big company that can just do like free shipping for everything. So, um, anyway, just let me know what you would like and, um, yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing, um, is a Knock Co. and Mike Dudek, Dudek Modern Goods idea block is what this is called. Um, this was a, you know, Brad, the pen addict, um, started this, he kind of created this thing with Mike Dudek. I'm trying to find some note cards so I can show you, uh, what it does exactly. Okay. I don't have, I don't have three by five note cards, but I have these Colodex cards. So what you can do is you store your note cards under here in this little area, and you can take one or two out and stand them on the top and they stand up. Or you can turn it around and stand them this direction and then it has a place to lay a pen right here so your pen can rest here and then your note card can be there so you can see it on your desk or you can turn it and have your note card this way with your little notes on it and your pen behind it anyway it's a um i believe it's a block of walnut solid walnut um really nice and um, the retail price, I think, was $50 for this. So if you're a note card user, you like to keep little notes on your desk, this might be a good idea for you. They have not, that was a special thing, and they have not made it for years. But next is another, I'm trying to get through these bigger things first so I can see what's down in the bottom. This is a Notco Brass Town. I'm kind of sad to let this go, but the truth is I just don't really like pen rolls. So this is a pen roll. There's the Notco label. It held it holds six pens in there, but you can also then stick some in here. So I mean, I've used it plenty. I don't think there's any stains or anything. I don't see anything. Um, there's plenty of room then to put, you know, four or five, three or four more pens down in here. I would kind of put one on this side and one or two on this side, so that even if they're in there, they don't touch. This is also kind of long. Um, so you can probably fit not a whole 12 inch ruler, but like a pair of scissors, a little thin pair of scissors or something in there if you want to. So that's super nice. Notco is not making pen cases anymore. So those are kind of hard to come by. Um, if you're a Hobonichi person, I have one A6, um, cover on cover. This is from the Dashinka collection with the little dog. And, um, I just ended up with two of these. So this one is brand new, um, never used. It's clear, it's clean, and would love to share it with somebody who would like to have it. Um, inks. So first up is this Kiwi Inks by Hippo Noto or Hippo Noto by Kiwi Inks. Um, number one, I think version one. 
can see a little swatch there. I do want to show you swatches for the bottles. I have a few ink samples and I'm, I'm not going to take the time to show you. Okay, here it is. I'm not going to take the time to show you the swatch cards for every sample that I'm going to give up. But um, here is that Hippo Noto ink. Um, I think I have inked maybe two pens with it. Um, I would say it is, I mean, almost completely full. Uh, I hate to open this because I've splattered ink a couple of times. Yeah, this is full up to up to about here. So I've only, I think I've only inked pens with it maybe twice. All right. Uh, this is Lamy Vibrant Pink, um, a mostly full bottle. Again, I think I've maybe used it twice. Is this a shimmer ink? I did not think it was a shimmer ink. And then today looking at it, I'm like, oh, this looks shimmery. I thought it was just a heavy sheening ink. Um, when I flip it over, it's got these particles that kind of stick to the bottom that look kind of like sheen. But, um, you know, so you might want to shake it and then sort of let that settle for just a second. They settle really fast. But um, I'm trying to be transparent with you about why I'm letting things go. I don't want anybody to get something and be like, this is not what you said. But here is the swatch card for that. I think it's called Lamy Vibrant Pink. Um, I, I don't know. I had some uncertainty about it. And then I did a little swatch of it just a little while ago to see if I could see shimmer. And I don't see shimmer it's also in this like this little not this up here this but you can see it's got that um heavy sheen to it so that's two inks um emerald of shavor this is from maybe the third third release like you know it was kind of early on i was waiting for it to be available and um I've only used it a handful of times, three or four times. Let me see if I can see how full it is. Mm, I'm going to say this is 90% full. I think it's up to about here, 80 to 90% full. So, and I always shook it, you know, uh, whenever I used it. So the, the uh, shimmer should be pretty evenly distributed. Um, nothing wrong with it. Just don't reach for it. So if you're an Emerald of Shavor fan, this one does come with a box. I think I might have the box for the, la the Lamy ink, but I don't keep most boxes. Um, Sailor 173. Oh, here, let me show you. Okay. Here's... Hold on. Emerald. I get, to, I get to working on this, and then I can't like think about what I'm doing. So probably some of the shimmer has rubbed off of this um, because it's been on this swatch card for several years, but um, it's got that red sheen around the edges, bright or well, kind of a deep teal and that gold shimmer and sheen. It's beautiful. All right. Sailor Ink Studio 173 is here. It's kind of a light apricot peach color. It just comes out a little lighter than I would I want it to be. So um, I think it is really pretty. I've only inked it maybe once. I'm going to keep 473. It's a little bit darker kind of version of the same thing. But I'm going to let 173 go. And then the next one is Sailor Gentle Apricot. Um, I bought this after it, they started making it again. So they had stopped making it for a long time. There was a big run on it. People were really like grabbing it up and then they started making it again. So this is a newer bottle. Um, probably only used two or three times. Can you see? I mean, it's all, it's up to here on the top of the cap. So it's mostly full and that's a pretty orangey. I just really want a more saturated color. So it's bright. It is pretty. Um, just not getting use in my collection. It's got a little bit of a kind of a sheen to it. Um, Van Diemen's Snowy Mountain Sunset. This one is kind of sad because I like ordered this all the way from Australia by itself because I was so excited about it and it just I can't get it to work right for me. Um, any pen that I've put it in here it is. Look how beautiful. 
it is really, really pretty. It's got a golden shimmer. Um, but any pen I put it in, I just have not been happy with it myself. It's kind of dry and light. So if you're a broad pen user, probably, um, there's actually some green that comes out in this, in this ink. Um, or if you've really been wanting this one, I am willing to let it go. So that one, uh, Monteverde Rose Pink. Um, again, just, it's really pretty, but it's light, it's dry. It's very similar to Pelican Edelstein Smoky Quartz, but I find it to be drier than Smoky Quartz. Um, I'm just not getting along with it as well as I would like to. Here it is, a bright purpley pink. It is really beautiful. I don't, I don't hate the color. It's just not working as well in my pens as I want it to. And I'm kind of tired of having it on my shelf when it's not something I'm reaching for. Um, a couple of Diamine inks. This is Diamine Scarlet. Um, again, this one is at 80%, 80 to 90% full. That rose pink is about 80%. Um, uh, Diamine Scarlet. All right, here it is. It's a bright reddish pink. Very pretty. Nothing wrong with it. I just have other ones I reach for more, and this one sits by the wayside. So, um, you know, it just needs to go on and leave my collection. Same for Diamine Grape. This was a favorite of mine for a little while. I think I've used a little more of it. I'm going to say it is... Well... It's still about 80%. It's 80 to 90%. It's full to about right here. Um, Diamond Grape. This one is, I don't do heavy sheen anymore. I just don't prefer it. I did early on. And this has, this is a dark purple with that bright green sheen, which is pretty, but it's just not what I am reaching for, what I'm wanting to use. So, um, then I have <laughs> Erbon Cafe des Iles. Uh, this is 90% full. I've only inked a pen once. I did not like it. Um, I felt like it was kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't like it. It comes across kind of gooey to me. It's not a good word. If you love this ink, I'll give it, I'll sell it to you for cheap. So, <laughs> um, some people may not have a problem with it. I just, I don't need to keep it around. So then I have a few ink samples. I'm going to run through these really quick because if you buy anything else, I will throw these in for free. Just tell me which ones you want. Um, otherwise, oh, okay. Wait, one more little bottle here. Otherwise, um, you know, cost of shipping and I'll send you the samples. So this is Ervon Rui Donk. I really want to love this. I had a sample of this that I did love. Um, this one is full up to here. So only, I think I only inked out of that bottle one time. Um, it just, again, it says desaturated colors. They're so pretty and I want to use them and love them. And I just end up disappointed and not reaching for them. So I need to let it go. Let someone else enjoy it. All right, these, I'm calling this a sample because there's so little left in it. I spilled it on my desk. Corel de Tropiques. Uh, Airborne, I'm not going to show you all of these. Um, Papier Plume Sazerac. I wanted to love this. I love all of my other Papier Plume inks. Um, did not get along with that yellow orange. Diamond Blue Velvet. I have a whole bottle of this, so I just need to let the sample go. This one, like, it's just enough for you to swatch it. It's not enough for a full fill. You might be able to, you might have enough to put in a pen one time and enjoy it if you use a syringe. It's not a lot. That's what several of these are. Um, Roaring Klingner Alt Bordeaux. This one, too, is just about one mil. It's not a lot. But if you want to try Alt Bordeaux, if you want to try Cassia, this one is also about one mil. That's why I'm doing these for free or, you know, cost of shipping if you want a bunch of them. Um, Sailor Ink Studio 731. This one is less than, less than, ha less than a mil, about a half. So really just a swatch, probably. 
um, but it's a bright, bright pink, really pretty. It just is a sheener more than I want it to be. Uh, this one has about one and a half mil. So that's certainly a fill. Ferris will press Lady Rose. You can certainly fill a pin with it at least once, maybe more than once. Um, there's about this much in there. And of course it dips down into the little cone. So there's a good little amount. Uh, Airbon Diablo Mint. This is really like half of a mil. So um, you might be able to put it into a pin or just um, swatch it. And then Monarca Cardona. Um, I wanted to love this. It's just way too sheeny for me. And this one is more than two mils. This is certainly, you can fill a pen with it at least once, maybe twice. So um, if you've been wanting to try a Monarca ink, I want to try some other ones. This one is just too sheeny for me and it might be a little shimmery, but I, I just didn't enjoy, it was really pretty on the page. I just didn't enjoy using it. So, okay. I'm going to get these off my desk and then show you the rest. Um, Kaveco Sport in white. Classic. Gold. This has got a medium nib. This was one of my first fountain pens back in 2015. So it has a little bit of blue staining there on the inside. Not on the outside. It looks like there's a little bit of color on the threads here. Um, this has got a little wear on it. But for something to throw around. You know, I the nib, I haven't used it in years. Might need a little bit of tuning or something. I don't know. So um, I'll try to price that accordingly. This is a Twisby uh, Collector's Edition in Coral. Not Twisby. Coveco, of course. It's got a medium nib. Um, it'll come with the clip unless you don't want the clip. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with this one. I used it. I just, oh, look. Um, sure. I'll include this if you want it. If you don't want it, then I will keep it. So let me know. Um, yeah, I just am not reaching for it. So happy to pass it along to somebody who's a collector who might really want it. Laban Rosa and Lilac. This pen is gorgeous. There is nothing wrong with it. Comes with its converter. Um, I just, I don't know, I, whenever I ink this pen up, I don't grab it as much as I want to, you know, like I don't, I don't find myself choosing this one over other ones, and so happy to pass it along to someone else. The Leonardo Furore in Aqua Petra, this pen is really beautiful. Um, I don't get along with the grip as much as I would like. I find my fingers slipping off the edge because it's just that straight part down here. It is comfortable to use, but for me, after a little while, um, I'm not as comfortable. So I noticed, I just recently inked this up in a mystery matchup with Lee Dete, and I noticed that it had, it got some discoloration on the nib just a little bit. I'm trying to show you as best I can. It's really kind of hard to see, but I hope you can see that at least a little bit. This has got a medium nib on it. Um, the nib works fine. It's smooth. I, I don't know why perhaps that Airbon Lee Dete ink um, discolored the nib just a little bit, but this is the rose gold furniture, rose gold nib, and I'm sorry about that little bit of staining or whatever, discoloration. The nib seems to be in good shape other than just the, that, those little marks. Um, I have a Jinhao X450. This one, again, is from like 2015. Um, I haven't used it since probably 2015. And uh, has a converter. This is the metal body. Jinhao has this like rubbery grip. Um, it says the nib is, doesn't say what size, but I think it's a, fine to medium. It doesn't look very thin. So it's in good shape. Looks good. Yep. Opus 88 Col Col Coloro <laughs> um, in the pink and white. Um, this one has a medium nib on it. Nothing wrong with it. You know, I bought it after I borrowed Simone's, uh, Sim Simona's <laughs> um, Coloro and 
I enjoyed using this pen. It's very comfortable. This was one of the most comfortable pens to hold that I've ever held. Just is. I don't, it's the grip is just like the perfect width, perfect little flare at the end. The only thing that I don't like about this is I don't like the color as much as I wanted to. It's this pink and white, but when you put a darker ink in there, and I did not put perp, like a pink ink in there. I had a green ink. It just didn't look good to me with that ink in there. And I just, you know, it's just one of those aesthetic things that I was like, oh, I don't like this as much as I would like to. So I think I would like to get another color row at some point um, in a different colorway, maybe something a little bit more plain, but that is really a pretty pen. I'm just not using it. This Opus 88 I'm on the fence about. <laughs> um, this is the Mini Pocket 2023 Rabbit New Year. That cute little rabbit is holding a fountain pen. The rabbit is the reason I bought the pen. It's got these roses. Um, it says Happy New Year 2023 around it, which is not my favorite thing. This barrel is kind of a dark, dark gray teal color. A little bit translucent. I still have ink in it because, like I said, I'm still kind of on the fence. Um, this, like the Coloro, is a uh, eyedropper filler, so it holds a lot of ink. It's in good shape. And this one, as opposed to my other one, actually posts. You have to click it on there, but this one actually posts and um, works fine. But I just, these little bitty, the little bitty grip is what is a struggle for me. So I'm thinking I'm going to keep the other one, even though it doesn't post, to be kind of a on the go tiny pin that I will just be okay with not getting a ton of use. But um, this one has a broad nib, very smooth. I'm enjoying the ink that's in there actually. And I haven't even cleaned it yet because like I said, I'm on the fence about selling it. But if it's listed below with a price, then it is for sale. So <laughs> um, I've got, oh, another Quebeco Sport. This is again, one of my very first fountain pens. Um, Buy this if you want something to play around with. I eyedroppered it, which is why it's stained on the inside. And I worked really hard to get the staining out. I think that was Noodler's Cactus Fruit Eel. One of my most favorite inks of all time. Um, but um, I had it eyedroppered and could never get it fully clean. And just really haven't used it since. So something if you want to play around with it, play with the nib. You know, practice your nib adjustments. It's got a medium. Um, it's not, uh, yeah, that's, it's not in brand new condition or anything like that. This is a cross pen. What's it called? I'll put the name of it down below. Um, I actually find this to be a really comfortable pen. It's got a nice little nib on it. I just don't want to have to hunt down cross refills. Um, I was not using it every single day and I felt like it would dry out just a little bit. Um, if I used it every day, it didn't have that problem. But if I went a couple of days in between, I felt like I had to prime the nib just a little bit. So um, it's got a great little click. I mean, like it's a good little throw around, you know, nothing to worry about kind of pen. I think it was pretty inexpensive when I bought it. So just want to pass it along to somebody else who can use it. Um, this is a um, Moon Man pen. Can't remember the, the name, the, I'll, but I'll put it down below. Um, it comes with a converter. Um, I find this pen to be really comfortable, actually. It does post really nicely. Um, and it's a pretty, pretty pink. And this pen has a, an Edison nib on it that I bought to go on here. Um, in here is the Edison nib collar and the Moon Man nib and feed. So I'll include that. Um, this is a broad nib on here and the Moon Man one was probably a fine, I would say. Um, and I, I think my issue with this is that it just dries out. So I don't know if that has something to do with around the clip, if it's not sealed up well, but it just kind of dries up on me if I don't use it every day you know, um, and I've just got other pens that I prefer to use. So really pretty, you know, would love to pass it along to someone. This is a Pilot Vanishing Point nib unit with a broad nib on it. Um, this was the one that came with my Vanishing Point. Um, I found the broad nib to be a little bit too soft for me personally. 
It's very smooth. It is a great rider. Um, I just, for me, it was too soft. And so I would like to pass that along. I have two vintage pins. This is an Esterbrook. Um, I found it in a thrift shop somewhere. It feels like it needs, I mean, it does definitely need a good bit of work. Um, has a 2556 nib. I don't know anything about that. And I'm just not going to put the work in to get it usable. So, cute little Esterbrook vintage pen. Needs work. And this is a fountain pen. Um, this pen is an Osmeroid. It says Osmeroid England. It has a weird nib on it. Look at this. Like a stub, but um, it says B2 Osmeroid England. Um, it definitely needs to be cleaned up. Needs some work. Um, I bought it on a whim at a thrift store and should not have. And so just want to give it to somebody who can use it. And wants to work on it. Um, I'll peel that tape off. Hopefully it's not made a spot on it already. Here's the top. I don't think that there... It looks like this is how the top probably was, but it's got this little, like, dip right there. Hmm. Interesting. So, that is... What's for sale? Oh, this. This is a steel and flint. I think I bought this. This was a Kickstarter purchase. This is actually a ballpoint pen. Um, it's a metal pen made by steel, steel and flint. Let's see, what does it say? The steel and flint pen. Has that little sleeve on it. It's got a great little suction here. Um, a knurled grip, ballpoint refill. Let's see what kind of refill it takes. Parker style. So that's easy peasy. Um, I just don't use it. So it's super fun, super nice. Probably a good one to throw in your pocket. That's a really great little magnet closure. Yeah, just something fun. So um, in the description, I will put what the original price of these things was if I can find it. And then um, what my asking price is. So, um, like I said, send me an email. Let me know what you would like. Um, we can work it out together. And, yeah, I appreciate you sticking through this. I hope you find something you would like. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.